So a lot of people ask me how I move as efficiently as I do, whether I'm running a course of fire in a tactical course, a competitive course, or just in life in general. And my answer typically to them is not because I practice on the range doing these things. It's that I practice in my daily life doing these things. So if you want to get more subconscious at the simple things, like body mechanics, getting in and out of a position faster, you don't have to necessarily do it on the range. But think about position work. Think about something as simple as taking a knee. All right, so if we are taught the traditional step forward and take a knee, how is my stability right now? If somebody was to come into me and bump into me, I'd probably fall over left or right. So I wanna make sure that I'm not narrow. So instead of stepping forward and narrow, you could step forward and slightly out. To separate the points of contact here, which are three, the toes of the feet, the knee, and this foot over here to give me more stability. Now also that stability creates this gliding rail. So if I was coming out behind some cover, I could come out behind cover on this rail without twerking the body over, creating tension in the sides. So we want to get rid of tension in our shooting positions. So again, as you step forward, step forward and out with your position to have a more stable platform. Now, this is the start of a workout that I would do. We would do maybe five or 10 reps to each side. So I'd step forward and out to the left, and then I'd step back. Then I'd step forward and out to the right, making sure again, I have a good stable platform to that side as well. Eventually we can incorporate a weapon system into it. I'm using a cert gun here. So now what I'm trying to do is create neuromuscular efficiency. So when the knee touches the ground, the sights are on target and I'm ready to fire. Instead of dropping down and then extending the gun, if we can find better timing, that's gonna help us get the shot off quicker. Then we can try another kneeling position dropping right into the position that I already own. Instead of taking a step forward, you can also do this by stepping back, okay? So I can step back at that angle, again, making sure that three point is stable. And do that to the other side. So you can do this 10 times as well. Again, neuromuscular timing, if you've got a cert gun, you can even use a weight. You can use a small kettlebell. You can put a ball in your hand or something else just to keep this hand occupied as if you had a gun in it. Now, dropping straight into that space, the squat's gonna come in to play here with a lot of these positions. So if I was to squat down to a knee, my feet never had to move. Now this is where you do have to be careful if a physical therapist or some sports performance doctor was looking at you, they would probably cringe and go away. Be careful with this because you're hyperextending certain muscles. So like the quadriceps, for example, they aren't getting hyperextended. So instead of deleting that position from your entire brain housing group, because it is very important to be able to drop into position quickly without taking a step because you may not be able to take a step. So in this case where my knee is hyperextended right now, I could simply adjust it back. I've now taken the tension off of that muscle group. So just with that simple movement. So now I wanna practice that, touching down and making sure this isn't hyperextended and I'm still stable and I'm a good shooting platform. Getting into the prone position, for example, burpees are very popular in CrossFit, high intensity type workouts. If you've ever done one, you know what I'm talking about. And you can modify it slightly to get down into that position a lot quicker. So there's minimal steps, minimal effort. We're using the law of least effort in these positions instead of using lots of tension or directing energy in places that we don't really need to. So think about simple steps. Instead of falling forward, dropping to your knees and smashing your knees on the ground, which is bad, and then falling forward and having a yard sale with all your equipment, now, there's an easier way to do that. Even though that's a practical technique, it will get you to the ground quickly, but it may cause damage over time, like I've found with both of my knees being redone. I wanna squat down. So again, that squat comes into play here. Now, as I come to that hand and squat, which is what I remember for this technique, gun comes out, hand, squat. All I have to simply do is kick the legs back. Hand goes to the gun. If I was at a long distance and I wanted to keep my elbows on the ground, keep in mind path of least resistance with the recoil of the gun coming up. If you need more stability and recoil management, you can certainly roll to a side. Now you can notice what I do with my feet back here. I didn't leave them up because as gases go forward and recoil comes back, it translates down my entire body to whatever moves and then will move and translate all the way back to the muzzle. And then I could roll with a good range of motion to this side. Now getting up from this position is also very important because you may not want to find yourself in these positions very long. So I break the position back to a push-up position and think about an impulse push-up. And why I say that is because momentum being one of the key principles in biomechanics, we want to get that momentum, which is a combination of weight and speed. We want to get it into action. So impulse up, so I come right to a knee. 
instead of straining up and then bringing the gun up off, off the ground. So it's almost like a rocking chair position. <sighs> kind of rock up, can rock right back down. Impulse up. So I'm getting the gun back into that next plane. I look around, pop up, and I continue to look around, and I'm in that next plane very quickly. And at that point, we could stand up. Okay, so I do about 10 reps of this. Hand squat. Do you want to do a roll while you're down here to make sure it's good? Stretch out the body, hands back, impulse up, and stand. It's a very simple way to get in and out of the prone. You should always be conditioned in how to fall, of course. So it's always good if you carry a gun or you're gonna to try to, again, try to uphold that higher standard of care in a really bad situation, that moment that chooses us that we don't get to choose, right? Am I used to being in adverse conditions? Am I used to hitting the ground? And how do I do that? This is why defensive tactics is very important to take up as well. So if you're a martial artist and any other type of art out there, you understand what I'm talking about when it comes to something as simple as a break fall. So whether I get front snap kicked or an explosion goes off or I get shot and I actually fall down, I should know how to fall. So I'll go ahead and fall back as a traditional break fall technique. So now something you want to take in consider consideration is when you do fall back, use the natural biomechanics of your body to roll back so your head doesn't slam on the ground and potentially knock yourself unconscious. Now when I incorporate a, a gun into it, if I had the gun out already and something happened, I come in and I slip and I fall. So I practice rolling back to my back and getting the gun into play. Now as we come up, I didn't use my hands to get up. I can do that right now because I don't have a lot of equipment on, but let's say I'm a military guy or a SWAT guy, or maybe you're just somebody that's not in the best shape or you have back issues or something like that. As I go down and I want to get up, I can use my arm and just simply roll to the side, which is the technique we had to do when you had night vision on your head, a helmet, 35 pounds of armor, a shotgun on your side, and a lot of maybe ballistic materials. So things get heavy. It gets harder to get up for anybody, even the guys that are the best in shape. So always have different methods when you're practicing these techniques. So again, going back to the workout, I do 10 reps of this. Okay, so I'll do it with just the gun first, and I'll show you some other variations that you can do as well. So I fall back, and I get up. So I'm tucking this, this foot underneath my body, if you can see. So as I start to come up, I want that foot to get up underneath so I can roll right over the top of it. Again, if you have knee issues, you may have to come out so you don't kick the leg in and you can come up on top without overextending that muscle group or those joints, okay? So now, that was just with a gun. You can use simple tools like maybe a kettlebell, okay? A little heavier one here. So as I come back, you can start with adding <laughs> muscle exercises into this, and as I come up, I never move my feet. If you want to put the kettlebell above your head just to add a little bit more, I can get into a rhythm here. And I'm using efficiency. I'm using the law of least effort. I'm not trying to go for a personal record. I'm working what I need to work so I can build in some consciousness in that position. Now, you can use a ball, same thing. You fall back. You can come up, throw it to the sky, come right back down with it. Come up, throw it to the sky, come right back down with it, pull it up, come right back down, you get the point there. You can use a weapon, a rifle, same thing. You can use a weighted stick like this. Bring it up, because that weapon would be out in front of me as I come up to help me with that weight shift, that center of gravity, okay? So all different th types of things you could do there with just one simple workout. Side prone, just like when you're getting into the standard prone, we're just getting on our side. So if I squat down to a hand, same as a prone, I just simply want to take myself off the ground, lay myself on my side. So now it should feel exactly like I'm standing up. My elbow's not out here, the gun's not canted, it's straight and parallel with the ground. So if I was standing up right now, it would look just like a natural isosceles or a modern shooting stance. Now this leg can be modified any way you want. I want you to think about biomechanics here. Because when my leg goes back, which it naturally have a, has a tendency to do, I'm gonna let natural biomechanics take its course. Watch what happens to my gun. So now I have to use tension to put the gun back down on target. So if I let it go naturally again, I put the foot forward, 
the gun naturally rolls forward, which gives me better recoil management. When you're getting up from this position, you can break the gun in and come up over the top of it. Use momentum. Gun stays down range, especially if you are gonna do this with a live weapon, and then I'd stand, okay? So then I do about 10 reps of this. Squat to a hand, softly touch, come back up. It's a kneeling, stand. A little faster, a little faster up, because this isn't a position that you want to be in long. There's a vehicle right here, and I see a guy running, and I make that decision. I, want, I, might, I might want to get out of that position very quickly. So that's a support technique to the right side shoulder. Left side, support deck technique, same thing. We're squatting down to a hand, getting this shoulder on the ground, okay? Same thing getting up, except I'm just gonna take my support hand and roll it over and push myself up. Hand goes back to the gun, I stand up. The next variation of this is the PLF technique, which is parachute landing fall, it's a military terminology. If we're coming out of the sky in a parachute at 21 feet per second, it's comparable to jumping off of a two-story building. So we have to learn how to be almost professional fallers. So we'd use that kind of same technique we use in the supine position by rolling our bodies and start going to the ground. We'll use that same technique, just like in supine, rolling, like a rocking chair. So I come down, nice and smooth, nice and slow. The difference between this one and the other one is I never took my hands off the gun. Same thing, getting up as the other ones is exactly the same. Left side, same thing arch the body, because maybe I got hit. Maybe I took a round in the leg or in this gut and I fell down. I can land on that side and still be in action because the weapon's in action. Again, getting up the exact same way, push up to the knee, stand back up. So you can see now I've got four different techniques right there with just a side prone, two supported, two unsupported. That's potentially 40 reps if you wanted to do 10 reps at each one of those. So again, there's lots of different things that you can do with just position work, but it also takes something else that's very important as well that we don't tend to think about. How do you know when and where to get into that position? Situational awareness, okay, we call it SA. The other thing that also goes with SA is spatial awareness, okay? So what's an example of spatial awareness? Like if I was to feel this wall to my left or take a look at that number three on the wall over there and now start walking towards it, but I'm burning that memory into my mind because if there's a threat area out here, and I start to move, can I go right to that position of where I want to be without looking at it again? Because a lot of us will tend to focus on this to get there and then go back to this. So spatial awareness is very important all around. And that's just one very, very basic example. And I'll, I'll show another one here of moving back and forth between these balls, something else you can do to actually increase that. So you can focus more downrange. Okay, so that spatial awareness is very, very important. So bottom line, guys, this is just quick, 30,000 foot view of something that you can do on your own, in the gym, at home, out in the fields with the grass, or even go to the range, dry practice this stuff, get proficient at body mechanics, instead of going out to just a training class and hurting yourself for three days. So it's your daily life is where you get your proficiency training. So I leave you guys with that. Stay sharp, be safe, I'm Travis Haley. Thanks for joining me.